Hello everyone, good day and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. I am Carmina Makaindig and for today's topic, we will discuss enterprise profile, development of alternative strategies, evaluation and choice of strategies, contingency planning, and the medium and the short range planning. So, what comes in our mind when we hear the word enterprise? Of course, the business, right? The business and uh, the things is that when we hear the enterprise, uh, there is, has many things that we called entities. And those entities are supposed to work together to do something useful. So, for an instance, if we have a profit-making uh, product enterprise, then we can imagine that in our company, we need people. Of course, we also need the processes that we need to do so that we can achieve our goals in our company. The technologies, we need that so that we can do our work efficiently and effectively. And of course, the different capabilities of our workers and the manager so that we can achieve our goals. Then, we also need the raw materials so that we can manage the things. And then, of course, we need money so that we can start our company. To also the other things to make product and sell sell them to the uh, customer to make profit actually enterprises is also uh, involved or also work with other supplier it also work with uh, different partners it works with the government and others to deliver what is supposed to now let's discuss what is this enterprise profile it is actually a part of a software application that identifies a person and can verify their identity so by that definition itself you can or we can understand that that's the profile it means that that's the resume for short of a certain company so a complete enterprise profile might also include what the users know, what they have done, their performance in each role, who they have worked with, and what their colleagues have said about them. That is uh, what we say the uh, enterprise profile when it comes to the workers inside the company. Uh, enterprise profile actually it aims at capturing the attention of the reader and inform him or her about the company. It is actually designed to make a powerful impact or a good first impression on potential investors or clients of the certain company. So it is written with so much care acts as an opportunity for the organization to differentiate itself from from the other crowd it is uh, uh, as i said a while ago it is described as a resume so that it helps to establish the credibility of the business in the marketplace in addition actually uh, it is created for potential customers uh, to the stakeholders, suppliers, financial institutions, the government regulators, and potential investors. So, the information in that said profile can vary in details as it is dependent on the person or institution it is made for. For an instance, when a school is making uh, their profile, they will target the learners because that institutions are made uh, for the learners and then a concise profile is we can see often at in the posted uh, social media right we can see it sometimes on our facebook it actually in our wall sometimes we don't have 
to say see our friends posting their um, post nowadays because what we see in our wall is different markets different business business that was posted and then a while ago again a concise profile is open posted by most of the organization okay. on their website we have this different website when we have our company so so that uh, interested uh, parties like customers, clients, and saka investor can make a brief assumption from the given disclosure. A company includes information like the name of the company, the structures of the company, the location of the company, the contact information of the company, the email address of the company, name of the founder, partners and associates, name of its importance executive, management team, and board members, overall business activities of the company, the operational data of the company, the overall business strategy of the company, including its vision, mission, and purpose. The products and services that are offered by a company along with its prices, the financial data of the company including major assets, profits, and revenues, the previous, present, and future performance of the company, its history, its information about its physical, financial, and human resources, its management and organizational structures, and of course, it included also the short-term and long-term goals of the company. Let us now proceed how to create a company profile. The first one is we need to identify the purpose. A company profile can be used in case of several scenarios. For instance, identify one and only purpose of creating it. Why do we create our company? That's what we need to identify first. Then make a rough draft where you try to embrace your target audiences. This will give us a fair idea about our purpose and the ways to deal with it. And then number two, decide on the style. Of course, once we have the information in our hand, we, uh, we can now set a tone and decide upon a style on what we want to adopt to reach our audiences in making our company profile. Some companies prefer a timeline whereas other of four images, right? Then, uh, take the help of bullet points to break up the text as uh, so that it will look attractive. Uh, we have these various platforms that can make our style most fabulous. Then, we can use also the Photoshop. We can also use the different technology application or software so that we can make it uh, attractive. So, uh, do not be afraid to experiment as it will look new and innovative to the reader. Then, number three, uh, make it a captivating story. So, do not emphasize on the facts and figures. Instead, Make it a short but interesting story that will help you to captivate your audience throughout the journey. So, be precise. And then number four, outline your mission. So, write down an appealing mission statement that will highlight the niche and value of your business. Let your audience know that um, the plans for uh, let your audience know the plans for your best business the information should be uh, encouraging so that the target audience can identify and associate with it so sabi nga nila doon sa mga youtube mga bloggers make one niche in your um, blog so that the audience will uh, watch it kasi isa lang yung uh, gamit mong niche the number five, keep the format clear. So, an, an important thing to remember while writing a company profile is that you should keep the format clear. Do not let your true, uh, do not let your thoughts and uh, words run wild because at the end of the day, it is not a personal profile but business-related company profile that has to maintain a bit of professionalism and uh, decorum.
Then number six, we have here the company history should be written in chronological order. So, a fact about the company profile is that the company's history should be written in chronological order. Write Write it according to the order. List, import, uh, list important achievement that will highlight the development of the company to date. Okay, then number seven, we have these good uh, testimonials. While writing a company profile includes a good testimonials that will enhance your good company image. You can have a review on your customer and then include it in your profile number eight include contact information so if we are looking for ways to create our company profile we need to include our contact information for instance our phone number the email address at the top of it so uh, that it can be used offline or you can add your hyperlinked contact information at the bottom of the page if it is used online or you can also add the fax number if you uh, have it then number nine proofread so if you have finished writing your company profile it is necessary to proofread it to remove any mistakes right so make sure you are proofreading it after some gap because you are liable to miss errors if you continue with proofreading as soon as you complete your profile so that is the review when it comes to the Proofreading. You have to review the things that you do, the things that you make so that it can be 100% clear and efficient. Then number 10, read other corporate profiles so that you can have your other um, proofread, right? So once you have a proofread your profile, keep it aside. Now go through some of the profile of your competitors and this will help you to get a feel about your own. So you can compare between you and uh, your competitors company. If what makes uh, readers want to read them, what will uh, and take their interest, your profile or your competitors profile. Take that. Why it is important for the company for the company to make its profile? Of course, because it helps to identify markets for building sales figure and outreach in the stores and customers. So the importance of having a good company also is to offer the potential buyers an opportunity to know about your company and it also because it nudges a potential investor to have a direct inter uh, direct interaction with the sales and marketing team of the firm he wishes to invest in and of course it helps uh, uh, the potential customers to know about the company if they are looking for a specific product or services then we have here the advantages of having a company profile. Number one, generally used as a marketing tools to leave a long-lasting impression on the mindset of the readers. It gives its audiences an idea about your products and services. And then the company is considered a versatile and dynamic document that helps to persuade clients to do business with it. Potential uh, employee visits the company profile of the organizations they are interested in joining. It becomes easier to promote the advantages of working in your organization and by the company profiles. And then this statement establishes credibility and image in the market. And then it helps the potential customers and clients to know and understand about the strength and approach of the company. And it demonstrates the ability of an organization to meet customer needs. So it means that it will attract the customers it will attract the customer by just seeing uh, by just seeing or looking your company profile and then let's proceed to the types of strategic alternatives we have five strategies here number one is the competitive number two is the corporate then the business functional and operating 
So, we have here the strategic management types and then we have here the meaning. Competitive strategy, it combines the cloud of the external situation along with the integrative concern of the personal status of an organization. And corporate strategy, the top level by the senior management of the diversified company. And then we have the business strategy, the business unit level or business unit strategy. And the functional strategy is the pointing up a particular functional area of an organization and the operating system that's the that's the operating units of an organization so let's uh, look at that one by one what are the types of strategies in marketing of course we want to mention the type of strategic management strategies so we can specify it as five types or five level of strategy First one is the competitive corporate strategy, the business, functional, and then the uh, number five is the operating. So let's just first discuss what is competitive strategy. Firstly, competitive strategy is the first of the kinds of strategies in strategic management. It refers to a plan that combines the strength of the external situation along with the integrative concern of the personal status of an organization. The competitive strategies aims at gaining a competitive advantage in the marketplace against its competitors. Co competitive advantage comes from strategies that leads to some uniqueness in the market. Winning a competitive strategy is grounded in a sustainable competitive advantage. Example of the competitive strategy includes a contrast strategy, low cost strategy, and focused market niche strategy. According to Wikipedia, in business, a competitive advantage is an attribute that allows an organization to outperform its competitors. So, from the word itself, competitive, it means that you want to outperform, uh, outperform your competitors. So, you want to win against your competitors. So, the company... Or the competitive strategy consists of business approaches and initiative. It undertakes a company to attract clients and deliver so superior values to them through fulfilling their looking forward as well as to strengthen its market position. This definition of Thompson and uh, Stakeland emphasizes the tactics and ingenuities of directors in outlining the strategy. It means that competitive strategy is concerned with action. It managers undertake to improve the company's market position by satisfying the customers. So, the enlightening market situation infers undertaking action contrary to uh, competitors in the industry. Therefore, the notion of competitive strategy has a competitor's angle. The competitive strategy include those tactics that lay down various ways to build uh, to build a livable competitive advantage. So, management actions plan is the focus of the competitive strategy. Objectives of the competitive strategy is to win the customer's heart by satisfying their needs. Finally, it is to outcompete the competitors and attain competitive advantage. Then we have here our number two, the corporate strategy. Secondly, corporate strategy is a type of a strategy in strategic management. It draws up at the top level by the senior management of a diversified company. Such as strategy describe the company's overall corporate uh, strategy as well as uh, corporate strategy defines the long-term objectives and generally affect all the business net under its umbrella. So, our corporate strategy may be acquiring the major tissue paper companies uh, to become the unquestionable market leader. We have the component of corporate strategy, uh, visioning, objective uh, setting, they are resource allocation, and of course, they prioritize 
their strategic uh, trade-offs. Then number three, um, the different types of strategy in marketing, strategic mar management. Third one is uh, management or I mean uh, a business uh, strategy. So this business strategy formulates at the uh, business unit level. It is popularly known as the business unit strategy. This strategy emphasizes the building up of the uh, company's competitive position of products or services. Business strategy composed of a competitive actually and a cooperative approaches. According to uh, Manan, the business strategy consists of plans of action adapted to use a company's resources and distinctive competencies to gain competitive advantage in the market. So the business strategy covers all the activities and tactics for competing in denial of the competitors. And the behavior management addresses various strategic uh, matters so to address this. In doing business, company confront a lot of strategic uh, issues. So, the management has to address all these issues effectively to survive in the marketplace. Business strategy deal with these issues in addition to how to compete. Then, number four, uh, the functional strategy is a type of strategy in strategic uh, management. A functional strategy refers to an approach that points up a particular functional area of an organization. It sits down to achieve some objective of a business unit by maximizing resources productivity. Once in a blue moon, functionally or functional strategy names department strategy since each business function frequently devolves with a section. Example of functional strategy uh, comprise production strategy, marketing strategy, human resource strategy, and uh, financial strategy. According to Hunger and Weylin, at the level of operating division and departments, functional strategies focus on business process and value chain. So, the functional strategy is composed or conce uh, concerns with uh, developing the right staff to provide a business unit with a competitive advantage. Each business unit has its own department. Of course. And every department has a functional strategy. Functional strategies adapt to support competitive strategy. For example, a company following a low-cost competitive strategy needs a production strategy. So, it insists on redu reducing cost, operation, and also a human resource strategy. Furthermore, it insists on retaining the lowest possible number of employees. These employees are highly qualified to work for the organization. Other functional strategies such as marketing strategy, uh, advertising strategy, and financial strategy must also be formulated to support the business level competitive strategy. So the organizational plans become more and more detailed. Likewise, it become more specific also. When manager move from corporate business to functional uh, level uh, strategy. Uh, this functional, uh, they are, uh, wor the workers are involved in this because they are the one who function to do the work uh, within the certain organization. And then, finally, the operating strategy. This is the fifth type of strategy in the strategic management. So, it gives a uh, form to the operating units of an organization. A company may develop an operating strategy. For an instance, for its sales zones, an operating strategy is put across at the field level. Usually, to achieve on-hand objective in some companies, managers develop an operating strategy for each set of annual goal in the division. We have here the components of operation strategy. Uh, they are consist of six main components. 
number one is designing and positioning the production system. Number two, focusing production or manufacturing and service facilities. Then, designing and developing the product or service. Selecting the technology and process development. Allocating the resources and then the planning of capacity, facility, and layout to implement the uh, plan. If we need more knowledge and want to enrich ourselves with this topic, for example, the strategic management or the different type of strategies in marketing, you can read more, you can Google it, or you can watch uh, uh, you can watch on YouTube because they have some uh, teaching methods that are that involves these different uh, strategies. Contingency planning is defined as a course of action designed to help an organization respond to an event that may or may not happen. Contingency plan can also be referred to as plan B because it can work as alternative action if things don't go as planned. For an example, during this pandemic, different sectors or different agencies are having uh, challenges. They struggle on how they continue, how, on how they will continue uh, their development or how can they improve their quality of development during this pandemic. In educational sector, they struggle on how they can continue accessing quality education during this pandemic time so what they do is they craft or they draft this contingency plan and called it the continuity school continuity plan so every school have made their plan on how they can continue in pursuing delivering the quality education for their learners so that is contingency planning when there's a uh, certain things happens that unexpected then we have to uh, make our contingency plan for an example in our uh, community or in our company we have these certain uh, things that happen an earthquake happened and our uh, company's building just happened to uh, be just happened to collapse and then what you do as a managers and the workers you make your continuity plan to continue working even without your own building or your um, materials that was needed to continue uh, doing your work so your continuity or your contingency plan should include a step-by-step -step guidelines for what to do on in case the event has occurred and how to handle the situation furthermore it should also include information about the key personnel to reach out to including their up-to-date contact information that's what happened during the pandemic time uh, we as uh, teachers uh, make our continuity plan on how to reach out our pupils so we do a certain plan like uh, home visiting for our pupils to access education we even make a home tutorial to them but in our area during that time that we tutored our pupils uh, the police or PNP force of uh, Sultan Dumalundung uh, visited us and give us a memo that it is illegal to do so because that time positive I mean the positive uh, during that time are arising in our community so they make us stop that plan so after uh, stopping that uh, plan then we make an another uh, plan so that we can still reach out our pupils and then can assist their academic performance what we do is to give them an alternative learning materials the learning activity sheets and the assessment checklist we make make it and then deliver it to them and they are going to self-study that one and then answer the following activity within that certain uh, learning activity.
but I struggled on doing so. So we had to follow up and do the explanation on two-way radio so that the pupils can still access quality education. And then, the purpose of any contingency plan is to allow an organization to return to its daily operation as quickly as possible after an unforeseen event. That's it. That's what we do, right? So, the contingency plan protects resources, minimizes customers' inconvenience, and identifies case staff assigning specific responsibilities in the context to the recovery. So, what is business contingency plan? Contingency plan of a business entails a course of action that an organization takes on when unexpected event or situation occur. It plays an essential role in minimizing impact or damage that can significantly affect the organization risk organization's reputations, financial stability, and ability to stay in business. So, to prevent high losses, you need backup plans as a manager of a certain organization. We, you, you have to uh, have backup plans from letter A to Z. Just like a game of a chess, uh, such programs signify that your business is preferred for a situation that can shake the stability of your organization. So, that's it. Plan. Have plan. How do we create our contingency plan? Number one, of course, is to identify and prioritize your resources. Look within your organization. What are the resources that you deem your business could not do without? They are the resources that you need to prioritize. Resources such as your employee, the physical assets, and the IT system are essential to keep the business operation. Then number two, we have to pinpoint the key risks. Identify every potential threat to your resources. This step needs to rule research. The internet is rich with content, especially on business website. We can read through articles where entrepreneurs share situations and scenarios that put their business at risk. Use this article as the basis of your research. However, you will also need the perspective of the people in your organization. As your employees and uh, stakeholders, for ideas on any event that can hinder or create a negative impact on your resources. You can also seek advice outside your circle, a business consultant perhaps, or uh, any, any other person that you can seek, uh, uh, seek out. And number three, level the risk according to priority. Once you've identified every risk scenario or potential threat, in your organization, a plan will be easy to create. But before that, read through your list. From this, rank each trait according to rate, according to their urgency or priority. Create a bar or criteria for ranking. Put at the top the scenario that will most likely occur and has the most significant impact on your business. Then you can work your way down. Then next, you can now draft your contingency plan. Create a separate contingency plan for each scenario that you label. Outline the order of action the moment that event occurs. What would your response be? Okay, then you can now easily design the plan if you use a flow diagram. It is more comprehensive and very practical. At the top of the diagram, Please, uh, I mean, place the scenario under that. Draft the counteraction, then a response overview in the corresponding action. Assign the people that should be informed and involved in taking action, then indicates their key responsibilities. Lastly, write the timeline so that you can achieve your goals within that uh, allotted time. We have here the distribute your plan. Of course, uh, you have to make sure that all employees can quickly access the contingency plan. From time to time, review the contingency plan and 
update them when needed. There will be times that you will encounter new challenges and steps that might not be success from the previous event. That is why you need to update the plan. Also, keep the employees and stakeholders informed when there are changes in your contingency plan so that they can be updated time to time. Let's now study the type of goals. Actually, we have these three types of goals, the intermediate goals, the short terms, and then the long term. Now, let's distinguish the types of goals. Actually, uh, goals can be distinguished between three lengths, the short, medium, and long-term goals. Generally speaking, short-term goals are goals that can be accomplished immediately from now until a year, while medium-term goals may take from two to five years. And then lastly, the long-term goals are goals that may take up to ten years. But uh, we will now study or we will now talk about these uh, short term goals and the uh, medium term goals as stated by the requirements given by our professor. So let's not include the long term goals. Uh, short term goals actually is up to one year or a growing season, uh, provide immediate satisfaction and it also uh, Painting a building or running a swell test. That's these are the examples. And then finishing a calf, uh, getting crops or plants in the ground two weeks or layer or etc. While intermediate terms, it's one to ten years. Uh, it can be used to set a growth rate. Use as a basis for long-term goals and then uh, buying a farm or buying a house, saving funds, and buying a car or etc. That's That are the example of short-term and uh, medium-term goals. Let's talk more on what is short-term planning. What is short-term planning, by the way? In business, generally focuses, it generally foco focuses on a uh, three to six month time frame, especially in a reference to revenue and profitability. Short term objectives are geared toward short term needs such as Im uh, improving cash flow or launching a new product. This short term perspective is especially useful for satisfying investors who wants to see results or uh, improving your company's bottom line so you can secure additional financing for long-term goals. So whatever your short-term goals, make sure they serve your longer-term vision. Your new product launch uh, should be consistent with your overall brand and with the line of products you're building over time. Your strategies to improve cash flow should bring in additional revenue in a ways that don't compromise your values or distract you from your overall mission. Then, medium term planning naman po is often overlooked in discussion of strategic objectives. But it is also important because it brings together the clarity of short term, short term term goals with the depth of longer term planning. A short term goal may be based on a uh, medium uh, needs and long term goals may be so broad that it is difficult to create measurable milestone. But a medium term goal is close enough for you to project a specific targeted outcome while also being distant enough to be meaningful for your longer term vision. Actually, medium, uh, medium term planning generally covers a period, uh, period of about uh, 3 years. It may include plan to open a new store or enter a new market. It is a long enough time frame for you to see if you're achieving real result. So yet, it's a short enough, uh, short enough period for you to pivot, uh, change direction if your initiate or if your initial strategy isn't successful.